I bet him a thousand dollars that he cannot produce what he says um, to be the truth. Just as I bet on these videos, uh, another person, uh, I forgot what the name is, also an anti-Chabad kind of things, the heresy of Lubavitch, he calls this, uh, that video, I bet him a thousand dollars that the place that he quotes, that the Rambam doesn't say what he says. What did he say? He says that the Rambam says that Messiah cannot be from the dead. I bet him a thousand dollars to quote me where he says that. Because he doesn't say that. Now, of course, Maimonides, in a simple context in chapter 11 of the Laws of Kings, Halacha 4, seems to indicate that Messiah cannot be from the dead. He indicates that, but he doesn't say that. He doesn't say Messiah can't be from the dead. He does say that if a Messiah doesn't uh, isn't successful as he should, or or is killed in battle. Then this is not he is not the uh, promised Messiah. I've explained to you out there that this is because there was Rabbi Hillel who felt that Chizkiah, who was uh, designated as the Messiah according to the Talmud, because Shakodish Baruch Alasis Chizkiah Mashiach, is found in the Talmud Sanhedrin chapter Chelik. Um, and and uh, since God wanted him to be the Messiah, it had to be that he had the qualities of Messiah. And if he has the qualities of Messiah, designated by God as such, Rabbi Hill's conclusion was, since he was not successful, just as Moses was the man who was supposed to lead the people of Israel out, no one else, only Chizkiah has that title, nobody else. This is what Maimonides is arguing against. Maimonides says that Chizkiah was not successful totally in doing what Messiah had to do and is not the Messiah that's promised. How do I know this? By the fact that somebody else who was killed was also called Messiah. His great-grandson, Josiah, Yoshio, was killed by Paranacho and is called in the writings in the Ksuvim by Yirmiya, no less than Jeremiah the prophet, calls him Mashiach Hashem, the Messiah of the Lord. Now, if Messiah is only a single person, then how is it that Yoshio can be called the Messiah of the Lord? Obviously, the word Messiah, Messiah of the Lord, refers to not a particular individual, but a job description of someone from the house of David who will fulfill these um, these particular goals that the Messiah is supposed to reach, which actually had originally been achieved to a certain degree by King David. In fact, the Jerusalemite Talmud, chapter 2 in Brachas, I think it's either Halacha Gimel or Halacha Dalet, uh, in, the, uh, in the Vilna Press, it's on uh, page 30, Tesvav and in, in Brachas, in the middle of the page, it says, Rabbanan Amri, the rabbis tell us, who are Rabbanan, these are the majority of the rabbis in that generation say that if Messiah is from the living, his name is David. If he is from the dead, then his name is David. If you look in the Pnei Moshe, Pnei Moshe says, if he's from the living, then his name will be David, it'll be somebody else. But if he's from the dead, then he is King David himself. Clearly, according to the rabbis, in the Jerusalemite Talmud, the majority of the rabbis of that generation, Messiah could be from the dead. And in fact, I've proven in a different place, in different places, that this was an accepted belief by many scholars in the Talmudic, in the, in the um, Babylonian Talmud, and that no one ever criticized someone for believing that King David, who was deceased by that time, 11, 1200 years, could be the Messiah. And so, clearly, clearly, uh, the Talmud, both Jerusalemite Talmud and Babylonian Talmud, do not castigate anyone as a non-believer for believing the Messiah could be from the dead. And Maimonides does not say that, does not address that issue. And the reason he doesn't address the issue at all is because he deals with facts, and facts don't deal with miracles, and being raised from the dead is a miracle. But he does not say it is, it is impossible for uh, this to happen, just as he says, uh, he says concerning Messiah that Messiah will not change the world. 
that there's no difference between the days of Messiah and this world as we experience it today, except for the fact that we will not be under the subjugation of other nations. He says that clearly, but he doesn't say Messiah cannot be from the dead. And the reason he doesn't say that is because it's brought down in two different places in the Talmud. But he doesn't address it because he doesn't address supernatural things. And perhaps you could say that because he says that uh, there's nothing going to be changed, perhaps that's the conclusion. He doesn't say that, however. The reason he doesn't say that is because even though um, Shmuel says there's no difference between the time of Messiah and the time of our time in the exile, except for the subjugation of the nations, Shmuel was well aware of the possibility that Rav, his colleague, said that Messiah could be from the dead, and Shmuel does not argue on that. We have no record of Shmuel arguing on that possibility. And we don't have any record of any of the sages of the Talmud arguing against that possibility, nor do we find any objection to the rabbis in the Jerusalemite Talmud. Therefore, the conclusion is very clear. There is no objection to the belief the Messiah could come from those that have departed. The reason why it's not mentioned in Halacha is because it's a miracle. We don't deal with miracles. Berger himself seems to wants to quote from Nachmanides. He tries to quote from Maimonides, and again I challenge him. Thousand dollars produce where Maimonides says Messiah cannot be from the dead. You can't, and you know you can't. That's why you haven't responded to me. And uh, Nachmanides. In his critique, critique in the in the disputation, prefers the option that Messiah will not die. He says that, but does not negate the possibility that Messiah can die. And in fact, the fact that the Christians believe in a second coming, he does not criticize that as something untenable. What he what he says is untenable. Is, is all the other things that surround it. Now, if this was such a terrible, terrible mischaracterization um, of the coming of Messiah, that he could not be from the dead, he should have made that as a major point. He doesn't. Why doesn't he attack that directly? The answer is because he knows that there are two places in the Talmud and many, many uh, of the Amoraim, and perhaps most of them, believe that it's possible that Messiah could be from the dead and just didn't address it. Uh, the fact that some of the, in the disputations afterwards, they use this as an argument is not a proof of the tradition of the Jewish people. It's very simple. You use whatever argument you can in such a disputation in order to get rid of the dispatch your opponent. It was more convenient to say, we don't believe in a dead Messiah, than to have to deal with a second coming of, of Yoshka of Jesus, Jesus of Nazareth. And the reason is because um, once you're talking about a second coming, well, why, why not believe in his second coming? They don't want to deal with that. But that's not a proof that they didn't entertain that this could be a possibility. Nowhere have I seen anyone say that Messiah cannot be of the dead. Certainly not in the original uh, documents, the original commentaries. And the fact that there are uh, people who uh, make this claim uh, that this was the tradition. Uh, again, uh, you have to bring the proof. I haven't seen the proof. And you cannot, from what, if there are such proofs from the Ahronim, you cannot make people into heretics because they believe in what it says in the Talmud in two different places. Uh, you can't just make a heretic out of people. And that's in a nutshell, my position, uh, Messiah will come, will be most likely from those who are alive. But can he be from the dead? Can he be the Lubavitcher Rebbe? Or could he be someone else? Can't be J.B. Rabbi Yashi because he was a Levi. But if he is from the house of David, from the tribe of Judah, from the house of David, from the family of King Solomon, then most likely it's from the living, but it could also be from those that have departed. And if you have proof from Maimonides, $1,000 bet, $1,000 says you can't prove it. You prove it, $1,000 is yours. But if you try and you can't prove it, you owe me the $1,000.